Imagine that you're sat in the office one day when the boss wanders over and asks you to paint the image of the Earth onto the body of a Formula One car. Well, that was a huge challenge facing the technicians here in Honda Racing's paint shop. Making it work on a model was one thing, but a full-size Formula One car, quite another. So, Andrew, tell me how you felt when you first heard about the Earth car project. Shocked. Um, obviously, it was a complete break from the norm in what, what, what we've been doing in the past, where obviously we've had a car and then we've had sponsors uh, and partners' logos on the top. This was a completely different concept, so at first uh, we did have a few sleepless nights wondering how we were going to achieve it. For such a complex design, spray painting wasn't an option, so the team looked for a more radical approach. Vinyl wrapping has been used for years to advertise on buses and taxis, but could the technique be applied to a 230 mile an hour Grand Prix car? Would it be too heavy, and would it compromise the all important aerodynamics? The weight issue isn't such a problem because we're lessening the amount of paint that we're putting on, um, okay. so that uh, compensates for the, the weight of the vinyl. And the aerodynamics is something very, very important to us, and we've looked into that and run many tests during the winter to ensure that you know we don't compromise performance in any way. The actual vinyl itself is um, 60 microns. What we've got is we've got a what, tape. What, what 60 microns? It's very thin. <laughs> but we've okay. got an even thinner tape, which is 30 microns, which we put across um, all the joins and leading edges of everything we do, basically, to right. stop it peeling up. After the vinyl wrap passed all the technical tests, it was into the computer room to translate a 2D image of the world onto a three-dimensional Formula One car. A sophisticated series of images were produced, which were then printed on a massive inkjet printer. The trick was to make it look believable. Quite, quite frankly, that was one of our big challenges. How did we try to, uh, to emphasize the fact that it was the planet we were trying to show and not just a, a blue car with landmass on it? And that's why we went for having the, the edge of the planet uh, with the atmosphere and everything, so, that, so you, did, you, you did understand the, the concept that we were trying to put forward. That's the black at the, at the back yes. of the car? Yeah. When you look at the car, it's actually a patchwork quilt of, it is, of yeah. different parts. How many different, different elements are there? Um, at the moment, we're up to about 46, 47 different parts. Really? Yeah. In total, six metres of vinyl is used to wrap a single car. I'm making a complete hash of this, Mark. All yours. Yes. <laughs> I've seen the Al Gore movie, and, and I'm right in thinking that the Earth is actually brown. Yes, not green. <laughs> slightly browner than we have it. Yeah, um, we did have to change the colours slightly. Um, there were a couple of reasons for this, mainly for uh, TV filming um, and photography to, to, to bring the landmass out of the sea, um, and also that we had to remove quite a lot of the cloud because obviously at any one time there is plenty of cloud on the earth and you, you can't actually see the, the continent. Spotting your hometown can be fun, as Jensen found out. I haven't found Froome on the map yet. I found found most of the world, but I haven't quite found Brazil. I think it's under the car. Is it? It really <laughs> is a uh, country. After months of hard work, the finished car was unveiled at London's Natural History Museum. So how did Andrew feel when the covers came off? It was kept a secret from everyone right up until the last minute, so everyone was surprised. And quite frankly, I'm just really pleased with the, the result that we've had and very proud of my team.